I can't allow it. That's always been something right from the beginning that we were like, we have to get this right. We had some of the best concept artists in film and TV working on it right from the beginning. We, what do the women look like when they do it? What do the men look like when they do it? Are there differences? What does the channeling itself look like? And I have always, I think the rules for channeling are excellent in the books. Magic exists in this world that we're in. Um, and there is such a thing as the one power and whoever can wield that can either destroy the world or save it. And it's been prophesied that there is someone called the Dragon Reborn. Moiraine sets out to find who this person is because they obviously have a lot of power, the most power anyone has ever had. So the one power is something that you can draw from like the true source. There are very few group of people who can channel. Some are born with it and don't need to be taught. There are men awaking who, who, who can channel the power again, except there's no structure for them using it. You know, the women have a, have a structured use of it and they're very responsible in their use of it. And right now, as it exists, a woman can't train a man to weave the one power because the experience is completely different. It's, it's Saidin, which is completely different from Saidar. For me, when I went in with the VFX team, my first brief on Saidin was, this needs to, when it appears on screen, feel disgusting. I want to see it seep into and actually corrupt these beautiful white weaves that we've seen before with its darkness and its oiliness and its like stickiness that you want to, when you see this visual on screen, actually shudder and sort of feel like I would never want to touch that. I would never want that touching me. Um, and if we can do that, then I think it, it goes a long way to um, helping us understand the whole concept of Saidian and what's happened to it. I think it's it's many things. In the books, the descriptions are very interesting. I, they, it's like, sometimes it's, when I was reading it, this feels like it's almost like using a drug. It's something you really, it's, it fulfills you like completely and it's something you, you love to use. But if you used it, you try to get away from it. You don't want it too much. So it's like, it's like taking drugs, you know, it's, it's like, I don't know. The description are like taking heroin or something. It's a very strong power. It's a big question and conundrum is how do we, if there are men being born and men growing up who are going to be able to channel, how do we take control of that or try and manage it so that, you know, the great breaking doesn't come again or, you know, the great uh, unravelling of the world doesn't happen again. It's, it's nice that there is just an assumed equality, if not, you know, a lot of the, the women have a more power in this world and it's not really questioned at all, which is refreshing. Obviously the element of magic, it's, you can go so many different ways with it and it's kind of an amazing tool and we've kind of seen it before, but I think, especially with the, with the Aes Sedai, the kind of rules around it and the kind of, this kind of um, historical kind of prophecy surrounding how magic can be used, how can't it, and the fact that it's kind of women who can kind of channel, I think is really kind of relevant now. I think without using to kind of kind of force it into a modern context, I think it creates a, re a really interesting paradigm and kind of a hierarchy with within the world of those who can channel and those those who can't. And more I think comes from the book from, you know, without the magic being there, you know, it's kind of like how can we do stuff without channeling? And you kind of look at characters like Moraine or whatever, they're not just out here, you know, using magic all the time. It's kind of this very powerful thing that can only be used you know at the, at the you know the perfect moment at the right moment and like you said with with magic there's so many ways especially with like vfx and everything there's so many ways to kind of show it but i think the relationship that kind of perrin has in this kind of world it still kind of ties into this power and, and, and magic and it's still on a very kind of human level and it doesn't it doesn't need to have these insane visual or, or big scenes surrounding it it's very kind of intimate still that kind of journey for perrin um, despite being um, kind of magical at the same time.